everybody, Norm over here, and I've got my friend Mark Mann, who is Hello. a fantastic musician, guitarist, songwriter, producer. I paid him to say all this, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, now this guy's a guy, and he works a lot with an uh, old friend of mine, Danny Elfman, who yeah. has produced so many movie themes and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, um, I uh, got, uh, got the pleasure of meeting him uh, in the mid-80s and helped out with movies and have been uh, part of the team ever since with uh, Steve Bartek, another great guitar player. I know Steve and also. We just, you know. we just did a film in the theaters it's called men in black international there you go Just finished yeah. that. and also some other big time stuff like spider-man and what other yeah stuff, them, you know? them spider-mans and you know goodwill hunting you know uh all the all the all the those are all open. little independent films you yeah, know, you like know. With a small budget and all that yeah know, so. dumbo was one we just did a while back for tim burton Dumbo, did you say? Mm -hmm. I've been called that many times over the years. <laughs> so, uh, for, for many reasons. So, you know, one thing that's really But that's, cool. that's my day gig. There you go. <laughs> that's my day gig, is working with With, with Dumbo? With yeah. Danny. No, oh, Danny. Oh, all right. Danny. No, I didn't call him that. No, I just, all that's, right, all right. that's your words. But, uh, I thought you were referring to me. So, but uh, one thing that's really cool is Mark is holding this guitar, and this is a Martin Tom Petty model guitar yeah it's a signature tom that uh yeah, and you know we both love tom and tom you said tom gave you that yeah it was it was he was working uh with martin um it was kind of before we did the rock and roll hall of fame uh where george harrison was inducted and uh, i don't know if you've seen that on youtube but yes it's got tom and jeff lynn and uh we had a guest appearance by uh, steve winwood was there and steve froney on drums and uh, Scott Thurston on bass and stuff, but we had a guest appearance by a guy named uh, Prince, and so that was a fun, a fun day. But anyway, right about that time, Tom was working with them to get a signature uh, acoustic, and this is it. And what I love about it is Jeff and Tom um, did the album Full Moon Fever, and and all the inlays are phases of the moon. I don't know if you can see that in there, but it's a gorgeous, beautiful guitar, eb ebony keys, and um, you know, it's kind of a pretty cool. And it's a great little guitar. I thought you guys might be interested in seeing that. It's got it's a very, signature very in there. I only think there was about 270. Yeah, days. it was very limited. It's kind of a combination of like a D28 because it's got the herringbone trim, but it's got some 45 type. Um, See, I come to guys like you torch. who know all this stuff. I just go, it's pretty and it sounds good. Well, there right, you go. So you, you know all the you know all the bits about the uh, little features and stuff yeah. that are really cool. And, and how long that. have you had this guitar? Well, let's see. Uh, about a decade. About well, it's been about 15 years, I guess. Very cool. And you actually you performed with Jeff Lynn, who's another guy that uh -huh. I know. I sold him a beautiful ES335 while back, and uh, he was. Um, he came in here. Um, he was friends with um, uh, from my Sharona. Uh, oh, uh, Doug Fiber. Doug Fiber. Was yeah, a good I, buddy I of was mine. friends with Doug. And yeah. uh, you know, I remember he and Ringo and Doug and all these guys. They would uh, hang out and you know. Yeah, that was a, a great loss when when, uh, when Doug, Doug was a great guy. And he was a good friend of mine. And uh, but uh, I got to you know work with Jeff for many, many years helping with, uh, since about the time of the Wilburys and doing computer stuff, I helped him do um, the Beatles anthology, uh, where we took uh, John's tapes and, and cleaned them up and edited them so that they could be used for the new recordings. Very cool. So that was me helping Jeff on that. And then we did a bunch of stuff. We did our VH1 Storytellers, and then he rebooted ELO. We did uh, ELO Zoom record, and then the ELO Zoom tour, which was a little short-lived because uh, I think a, a little event called 9/11 happened, yeah. and all sorts of things. Uh, but uh, and uh, uh, Jeff um, was, uh, you know, asked obviously because of working with George Harrison. We went and did the uh, concert for George and. He brought me over and I thought I was going to just do like one song with Jeff and it turns out, you know, we were playing the rehearsals and Eric kind of said, you know, move him over here and 
you know, asked me to play all this stuff, and I went. Very cool. It's like it was great. So that was a real high point to be able to do all the songs. Well, Jeff is a great guy, and Jeff is you know like a fantastic producer. And yeah, I I learn a lot. That's why I, I'm wearing the record for uh, Ruby. You know, the Ruby, Ruby Ate the Fig is a record I produced recently, and it's a, a female artist, and it's it's kind of progressive rock with really beautiful, beautiful lyrics. So if you look that up, uh, and you said it was kind of like reminiscent of well, the, uh, one of the reviews was uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra and the Police wandering through the desert having tea with Gray Slick, and so that's a great reference because it's it's very you know multi-metered uh, progressive like Mahavishnu, but it has police chords and all these nice harmonies and stuff like that. So it's a very different kind of sound with a female vocalist. Um, and uh, just the thought of that it's like the, an acid flashback the game is is that i learned a lot of tricks from jeff lynn and so i'm producing i produce this Very and cool. i just produced a new record with a partner lefty and the hat man where it's uh, me and my buddy another jeff and this is this is very much like uh, dave matthews and sting meet uh, steely dan so it's kind Very of a, cool so it's it's sort of like uh thanks to jeff lynn for all the behind-the-scenes tricks on how to produce. <laughs> Very nice. Well, those are a lot of uh, my favorite bands. Can you play a little bit for us, Mark? Yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, I mean... You know that one, right? <laughs> but, well, what, what was that? <laughs> yeah, I heard that uh, one. But, um, you know, it's sort of like, what do, you, what do you play off the cuff? It's like, you know, a little bit of a... Got a 57 chance for us old guys to get to work in the morning. I got a 57 Chevy. That's a little one-off song. Very cool. You know, <laughs> just throw it right at him. You know, just put. I know we only spot. got five minutes, so I. Uh, I do well, the you know, we version. can stretch it a case. By the way, uh, Mark is playing at California Saga Two. Yeah. Which is something. If you're that in the LA area, I'm very involved. On July 3rd, it's mm -hmm. charity to help homeless through the Get Together Foundation, and we have a lot of great uh, artists. Joining us, David Crosby is coming. It's, I think it might be Al only, Jardine. Al Jardine and the Beach Boys, which might be the only time that there's been a Beach Boy and a and a CSNY guy on the same stage. I Very don't know. cool. And Jesse Colin Young from the Jesse Colin Young. I remember seeing them when I was uh, at a little Universal boy. Amphitheater outdoors when it had no, no roof. <laughs> at the University of Miami Student Union when I went to school there. Um, I remember that, you know, so of course I was there, it was a four-year school, I was there for about nine years, so uh, it took me a long time to graduate, you know, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, well, yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of great music. Uh, Albert Lee. Albert Lee's coming in. The uh, section. You know. uh, the, uh, the guys uh, from Immediate Family who are, are the section. Are the section. And, uh, James Taylor's guys. Yep, and uh, it's, it's going to be it's going to be a nice thing down at the uh, Freebo Ace, and Alice Howe, the Ace Theater in the Ace Hotel, the Ace Hotel downtown. downtown. Like, I haven't been there, but I've been told it's really it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous place. It's like a built in the twenties, and it's all been refurbished, and it's just amazingly gorgeous. But uh, it'll be a great concert that you get a lot of great music, and we're helping people who right. are we're helping help. the Midnight Mission. And the, by the way, you and also uh, the time, Heart of the Valley. I think it's the uh, uh, the Hope of the Valley. Hope of the Valley yeah. uh, mission also. That's another local homeless charity. But, you know, being friends with Tom, and I was friends with Tom, this was Tom's favorite charity, the Midnight Mission. He loved the Midnight Mission. He played three times with Mud Crutch wow. for the Midnight Mission. Yeah. And uh, Ron Blair, a bass player, who I used to be in a band with before he was in the Heartbreakers, we went down and we passed toys out to kids uh, on Christmas Day, and Ron's a great guy, and uh, well, he's done some other stuff uh, for the Midnight Mission. Mike Campbell's done all kinds of stuff you, for the Midnight You mentioned Mud Crutch, and, and mm -hmm. I remember when uh, Tom got the boys back together to do uh, a new recording, and it was m my longtime buddy Ryan Ullier who recorded a lot of the... The, the and produced a lot of the um, last uh, Tom's records and also the Mud Crutch records. Cool. So. Well, when they first got together, their first gig was for the Midnight Mission. When they got together for the first time in 30 years. 30 years. And what's kind of cool. Uh, How cool is, is that phone call? Yeah. Well, here's hey, a, guess what? Here's a better one. Check <laughs> this out. So Tom, you know, there was a guitar I had that, um, this is before Tom knew about the Midnight Mission, and it was this really rare Rickenbacker that Tom did the forward to my first book, and Tom wanted this guitar, and I kept telling him, Tom, I'm going to sell it to you, but 
I want to keep it. For I'm going to sell it to you, but yeah. So eventually, yeah, I said, I, 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 "What is it? You reserve the right to first refusal." Right. <laughs> so, uh, so anyhow, so Tom, he would call me every three or four months and go, "Norm, come on, man, that Rickenbacker, I got to have that." And eventually, I said, "Tom, all right, here's the deal. I'll trade with you for something else, but you got to play for the Midnight Mission for me." And he went, "What's the Midnight Mission?" And when he found out about it, and really heard and saw what they do, he got very involved. So he played for the Midnight Mission. We raised about a quarter of a million bucks that night. And then Tom, at the end of the gig, I kind of hugged him and said, Tom, thanks. And he said, listen, I, I'm really happy to do it because homeless and musicians are well, this almost is, one and the same. This, this organization, I think this is the third year I've performed with them. And, uh, you know, we've done, we've done shows, uh, uh, Canyon Club and, and um, uh, theaters downtown and all sorts of places. But we've, we've raised for City of Hope, for Music Cares, the Grammy That's Foundation. That's another really cool thing. Too. We've raised a lot of money to help people. Uh, and a lot of people come out and support it, and, and it's great If you know, you're great capable music. of doing it, why not, you know? And, and I was going to just tell you, at the end of that first concert, Tom said, we'll do it again. And I said, Tom... You agreed to play one show for me for the Midnight Mission. You did it. You kept your word. He Everything is good. And he said, no, we'll do it again. And I never bothered him again because I didn't want to be a pest. And uh, eight years later, he called me and said, Norm, uh, we're getting mud crutched together to do album number two. And I promise you we play for the Midnight Mission. We're going to do it. And he ended up playing at the uh, Northridge Performing Arts Center. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. At the small, the smaller one. We've actually, we've actually done shows there with the with the tribe. The uh, that nice the whatever it is, Plaza del Sol or whatever yep. they call mm -hmm. that thing. Right. Yeah, it's a it's a great place. And Tom, you know, he's just he was a he was a great guy. Very you know, generous uh, man who was a, a, a real artist, and we miss him. Some of the best is there's nobody that likes music that doesn't like Tom Petty. I've never encountered anybody that doesn't like Tom Petty and all his music. So we're doing it for the Midnight Mission at the Ace Theater July 3rd. And Mark, thank you so much for being involved in this. And I'm so happy that all these musicians have gotten behind the Midnight Mission. Great cause. Thank you. California Saga 2, Ace Theater, downtown LA. July Mark, 3rd. Man, thank you, brother. Thank you.